Hi, I'm Sarah, and I'll be a waitress. I'm so wholesome, I can puke. Whew, the journey of Sarah Connor, the journey of Linda Hamilton playing Sarah Connor. Exactly. I don't know. Um, it's, it's a long one. In the late 70s and early 80s, American cinema saw an influx of strong female heroines in action film, from Pam Greer to Carrie Fisher to Sigourney Weaver's iconic Ripley. This is Ripley, last survivor of the Nostromo. But out of these pioneering roles, Linda Hamilton's Sarah Connor is a particularly strong example of why these kinds of characters matter, as her transformation between The Terminator and Terminator 2 would lay the groundwork for female action stars for decades to come. Now, 35 years after her first encounter with Skynet, Hamilton is reprising her role in Terminator Dark Fate. But Hamilton's return isn't just a case of Hollywood reboot fever. It's proof that with Sarah Connor, she pioneered for female heroines the exact kind of staying power that's typically been reserved for male action stars. I'm Linda Hamilton. <laughs> and this is your standard introduction. Oh, no. <laughs> so, 1984, I was just basically your average, barely starting actress who was asked to audition for this part. My reps were very excited about it. I read it and thought, mm, good, doable. It wasn't beneath me or anything. It was just, I, you know what, I think it was that it was Arnold. And I wasn't sure that Arnold was gonna be able to carry his weight as an actor. Finally, after an endless months of auditioning, I was cast. And it was really only when I was halfway through the film that I was like, hmm. This might be all right. In a lot of ways, The Terminator was approached like a cheap horror movie, with James Cameron directly setting John Carpenter's famously low-budget Halloween as an inspiration for the film. And, of course, every slasher horror movie needs a final girl. Enter Sarah Connor. Hey, my name is Jordan, and I am an editor with Vulture, and I specialize in writing about genre cinema, particularly horror, and action movies wherever I can get a hold of them. So an interesting thing about uh, Sarah Connor in The Terminator is that she is, um, you know, we come to know her as this grand action heroine, but in her first incarnation, she really draws a lot on the final girl trope from the horror genre and since this is kind of you know it starts out as james cameron's like cyborg slasher what you have in her is the woman who begins uh sort of meek and mild she's a waitress working at a restaurant as she says at one point in sort of a moment of grief like you know i don't even know how to organize my own checkbook while sarah connor started out as a bit of a horror movie cliche she wouldn't stay that way forever. There's even a moment toward the end of The Terminator, which Linda says hints at the transformation she would undergo between films. It was really the moment for me where Reese is hurt and I make him get up and say, on your feet, soldier. And that moment resonated with me. On your feet, soldier! On your feet! Ah, this is the transition that I want. Move it, Reese! standing up and taking responsibility and making him get up and on your feet soldier was a great transformative moment. You have a kind of fascinating setup with Sarah Connor in the way that she sort of, the character reboots essentially within the franchise from the first film to the second. In that on your feet soldier moment, uh, Linda has referenced that in speaking about this character as being a real turning point for her, as being a real turning point for for Sarah Connor in, in sort of shedding the skin of her youth and naivete and, and sending her into these extraordinary circumstances where she has to become an extraordinary survivor. Seven years later, it came back and that was a big surprise. I'll be back. I just intuitively understood that as that character, if we were to return, she has got to be 
completely crazy. So I decided that um, I would play her as St. John the Baptist crying in the wilderness that no one is listening to. God, you think you're safe and alive? You're already dead, everybody. Him, you, you're dead already. This whole place, everything you see is gone. You're the one living in a fucking dream, so I'm in, because I knew it happened. It happened. Judgment Day sheds off most of the horror elements to be a more standard action movie. But Sarah's transformation goes along with this shift in tone. She's still scared, terrified of the future that she knows is inevitable, but now she's even more determined to fight back instead of running away. In the way that Ridley Scott's Alien transitioned into the full-on action extravaganza that was Aliens as helmed by James Cameron, so too does The Terminator, which is this hybrid sci-fi horror film. It pivots fully into action for number two. One of the most noticeable changes in Sarah Connor's character between movies is her physical appearance, a fact that everybody focused on when the film came out. Once again, I was not at all prepared for people to single me out like that. Um, certainly the body, uh, especially, took me by surprise because that was just one small part of what I did to get ready. But the ar Linda Hamilton arms and, you know, I was very lean and I was very strong, but it's just all the attention that the body got sort of eclipsed all the other work that I had done. I've been hearing so much about these muscles and, and you really do have them. Here they are. <laughs> she just grabbed me, yes. I thought Arnold grabbed me. I had to look again to see who it was. Once again, you know, I was assigned the, the, the name of badass or iconic. And that was a, a, a question of timing, really. The world was ready to see a woman do that. I think one of the differentiating things that made a huge difference was that Jim wanted me to cut my hair off when I get ready to leave the mental hospital and go into the world and do battle. And I was like, mm, couldn't we just throw it back in a ponytail? I mean, I understand what you're going for, but the fact that I was able to play that character and feminize a strong woman, that you don't have to look like a guy to be strong. The unknown future rolls toward us. I face it for the first time with a sense of hope. After Judgment Day, uh, there were a few real fallow decades in the Terminator franchise. Terminator 3, uh, Salvation was the Christian Bale film. And then you have Terminator Genesis, which was the grand revival starring Amelia Clark. And I'm a believer that the Terminator franchise can exist without Linda Hamilton, but I think what those three failed entries emphasized is that the people making them, the people writing them, they misunderstood the importance of Sarah Connor and they misunderstood the importance of what Linda Hamilton brought to that role and why it made those early films work, why we connected to them so much. That's really disturbing, right? My name is Sarah Connor. August 29, 1997. It was supposed to be Judgment Day. None of us knew what the hell to do. At all. Talk. Talk fast. We just know who Sarah Connor is, but we don't know who she is today. It took a long time to get the script together because there are the other beautiful characters that we're trying to weave the story with. And in the end, I was really happy to get to come back and play her as a real woman. Not this hot chick with great arms and long hair. Do you know what I mean? Because it goes so far deeper and beyond that. And I didn't want to reinvent what I had done before. I wanted to set her off in a full, mature 61 year old body and soul you know i feel like i as a woman have so much more going on 27 years later than i than i did 27 years before 
Sarah too. To be able to age into a role and through a role and have the aging be a part of that role, we saw that to great effect with Hugh Jackman in his last dance as the Wolverine. Picard coming out of retirement in the new Star Trek series is a huge selling point of the show. But that is something that we can much more easily translate into a male character, even if it's not something we see too terribly often. I could sit and think about it for a long time, the amount of opportunities we've had to see women over 50 play an original role that lets them be their age and be strong and be capable, let alone a revived icon of which there are so few, to come back and wear the wrinkles on your face and the leather of your skin and have that be a badge of honor and have that be a demonstration of the life you've lived as opposed to being a liability. It almost feels like the Terminator franchise was leading up to a movie like this. Sure, the movies are about artificial intelligence, Skynet, robots taking over the world, etc. But at its heart, if you look past the cheesy one-liners and overly complicated time travel paradoxes, you find a story about a woman forced to adapt to a life of fear and paranoia. It'd be wrong to assume Hamilton's return to the Terminator franchise is nothing more than a gimmicky attempt to appeal to nostalgia. Instead, Dark Fate is a celebration of everything the character has done for women in action and honors her journey across the decades. I just couldn't bear it if it wasn't gonna be right. Like, I feel like I owe Sarah Connor, not the audience, not the studio, not the director. I mean, it's the first time I've ever been in a situation where I feel like I owe Sarah Connor the argument or the, the fight if something doesn't feel right. And I'm always the actress that's like, my job is to make the director happy. That's my only job. This time I wanted to make Sarah Connor, like, happy.